What's going on, you guys? Welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Jeremy One Sosa, aka Sith Lord Zeke, and I'm bringing you to you guys today, today my uh, pure Despia build. Um, the deck performed uh, pretty well at the beginning. Uh, I was kind of having a little trouble with it because I was, I was, I was, uh, you know, um, trying to figure out what hand traps are the ratio of hand traps to play. I'm still trying to figure it out. Uh, but what I found in the beginning that um, was that my build was just like kind of inconsistent um, a lot of times I would like have a lot too many hand traps or whatever and not enough starters so I kind of revamped it and uh, we, we, we put more monsters in, into the deck um, uh, the way I, I guess the way that I was thinking about it at first was like um, it, it doesn't need that many monsters I, I, that's how I felt I felt like it didn't need that many monsters but then I thought about we didn't have Brandon in red um, and we are missing like one more Despia monster or something like that and I think we're missing a few more spell cards as well and so I decided to go ahead and add more monsters to it um, instead of um, instead of the small hand handful of monsters but anyways let's go over the list and then we'll talk about um, we'll talk about a few things of, on, on why I'm playing a certain certain amount of um, spells and traps that I am all right so we got the uh two effect veiler here um this card i would rather play it at one but i feel like you need to play it at two so that you can have more targets for the uh queritus uh queritus is our, our our main turn one that we go into most of the time um so you you play the uh two effect veilers um uh, as well as the two prima being uh nibiru prima being beings uh, some people playing at three. I play it at two because I like to play other hand traps as well. Um, but it's it's a light and it gives you it's it's a target as well for um, Aquaritus. And not only that, but you know it's a great hand trap. You know for for like combo decks. All right, then we have the one uh, Despian comedy, uh, three Despian tragedy. Uh, tragedy uh, searches out your Despian monsters once it's once it's sent to the graveyard. Uh, and we have the maxi a lot of times. I feel like maxi um, Doesn't really need to be played in this deck, but at the same time you have to play it because of how the meta is It's like you, you really like Fall behind if you don't play it, you know what I'm saying? But a lot of times I feel like it 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 kind of doesn't need the card um, I don't know. That's just my personal opinion uh, then we have the Ghost Ogre. We have the one Ghost Ogre. We have the two Ash Blossom. Uh, we have the one Ghost Bell the Hunted Mansion. Uh, we have three Fallen of Albas. Uh, this guy is like, if you if you're not summoning um, Alibur, then you definitely want to try to get this on the field if you have a proper target for your opponent. Um, and then we have the three Alibur. This guy is the uh, starter for the deck. Um, you summon him onto the field and he searches out your branded cards for you um, And then we have the one drama turd some people I see playing at, at um, I played I see some people playing this card at three. I feel like three is just way too much for this card You only need one. It's just my personal opinion and um, Yeah, I think other than that then you, you just kind of like you can make space for other things like uh, effect Vela or, 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 or another Nibiru this card at three is just not needed because you you have the you have the ability to actually search it through uh, uh, tragedy or you can special summon it to the field with branded. So this card is it doesn't need to be played no more than once, uh, one or two. Now now you know now granted you don't have the um, the uh, effect veilers or you don't have the Nibirus. I, I know that that these two cards are you know pretty expensive. Um, some people just don't have the crafting material because they've already probably crafted, you know, a full deck or whatever like that. Uh, then you play the the three, but even then, I would still suggest that you play one because I feel like Al uh, Albion the Shrouded Dragon is a card that needs to be played at two or three because it's an upstart goblin. All you have to do is just discard this card from your hand, uh, back to the center, back to the deck, send a branded card to the graveyard, and then you draw a card. Um, yeah. So you know you get a, you get value for, for for this card going to to the graveyard because you can send the branded opening and um, branded opening uh, on on your opponent's turn when they go in for like or when they try to destroy your uh, your Despia monster 
you, you Despia fusion monster you can actually banish this card or any fusion monster I believe you can banish this card is it any fusion monster if a fusion monster you control yep so any fusion monster this card can protect it so um and another thing that uh Albion is good for is, is he's good for discarding as well because once you discard it to the graveyard you can actually use the effect from the graveyard and send a branded you know to the graveyard and because he's a uh, Albas while on the field or in the graveyard once you send that uh, that uh, branded card to the graveyard um, it can reset itself onto the field uh, being branded in white and our uh, screams of the branded these two cards will reset themselves onto the field and if you have let's say if you have uh, Despy and Tragedy and you send the um, you send the uh, branded opening to the graveyard you can banish uh, Tragedy and then you'll have a free opening onto the field during your end phase or like whenever you banish uh, tragedy from the graveyard. So that's a way to get it. And yeah, so he's, he's basically an up, upstart goblin, man. Uh, so I'm thinking about I'm about to put him at uh, two or three, maybe. And not only that, but he is a target as well that you can um, that you could actually uh, use to fusion with from the hand. So, yeah. Um, yeah, he'll probably I'll probably put the bump this card up to two or three. But uh we have the Nibiru Primal Being, we have the Harpy's Feather Duster, we have Lightning Storm, uh fusion deployment for your uh Fallen of Albaz. Uh you can play this card at two or three if you want to. It it makes uh Fallen of Albaz that much getting him on the field that much easier. And you're only locked in the fusion fusion monsters, which you're only fusion summoning anyways in this deck. Uh, and we have the one pot of prosperity. I bumped this card down. It was at three. I bumped it down to um, I bumped it down to um, uh, one because I'm playing the Jaw of Avery's. And I know some people are like hey, you playing Jaw of Avery's, but Jaw of Avery says target any five cards in the graveyard. At first, I was playing uh, I think it was Pot of Avery's, uh, and it only targets five monsters. Uh, but I feel like that this deck is so fast that you'll get the get the monsters into the graveyard so quick that uh and also your spells sometimes you want to add back your spells or whatever like that so you know i feel like jaw of avarus i think you, i feel like you got enough defense in this deck to you know play jaw of avarus um so yeah uh we got the one uh, pot of prosperity uh but yeah I, I like playing this card at one because it's either i don't know i just like playing it at one because i feel like banishing cards from the uh from the um from the graveyard, I mean, from the extra deck to the to the uh, banish pile, uh, face down. You, there's no way to like really recover them, recover them, and um, you can only activate this card once per turn. Uh, so I mean, you know, it has this pros and its cons, and you know, it's just really preference on what you, on how you see the deck. You know, uh, okay. So now we have the Brandon and White. You can discard this card with the. Um, I mean, you could send this card to the graveyard with uh, Albion the Shrouded Dragon, and it'll reset itself onto the field. You could discard it off of the Fallen of Albaz, and it'll reset itself onto the field. Um, yeah, so it's just a good, it's, it's a pretty good card. Um, and then we have the Despia Theater of the Branded. This is another card that you could send uh, from the deck to the graveyard with Albion. So, you know, and reset it onto the field with the Despia Tragedy. Tragedy. All right, uh, super polymerization. Some people playing it at two. I'm playing it at one. Um, there's no like reason why I'm playing it at one. I guess you could say uh, for like uh, there's not enough space. I guess I don't know, or I don't know. I just feel like at one it's okay. You know, uh, I feel like at two. Mm, the, well, my biggest pet peeve with this card is that you have to discard to activate it, and the card that you use to discard it doesn't it won't get its effect because it has semi it has a semicolon uh so that's the problem it's it's discard for cost so i really don't like that but i mean super poly is is a is an amazing card you know uh but i, I feel like uh we already run three fusion cards right here well four f fusion cards right here so uh we have the brandon white uh despian despia theater of the branded at two and then we have the uh super poly all right so uh we have the call by the grave two call by the grave the one cross eye designator um three branded opening uh, one jaw of avarice uh two infinite impermanences i would play this card at three and play the uh, effect veiler at um 
at one. Um, maybe I'll switch it up and do it like that. Uh, I'm still thinking about it. And then we have the screams of the branded. I really like this card. Um, it's a really good card in my opinion. Some people like it, some people don't. All right, and then for the extra deck, we have Starving Venom Fusion Dragon. We have the Predator Plant uh, Draco Stapalia. Uh, we have the Titanoclad. Titanoclad is one of my favorites. I like the summon in this deck. Uh, just because it's unaffected and then it, it gets like a crazy boost. It can go up to 4K, um, 4K attack. And then we have the two branded and I mean, Brigrand the Glory Dragon. Uh, I hardly summon this, summon this monster, but I usually just uh, pitch one of it, one of the copies um, with the uh, pot, the pot of uh, prosperity. And uh, we have the Spring, the Iron Dash uh, Dragon. Uh, I never summon this card. Probably summon it only once. Um, yeah, it's just used to just pitch with uh, prosperity, so that I can excavate cards. Uh, Albion, this is one of my favorite cards in the in the um, in the extra deck uh, because you get not only, you can not only summon him but he'll summon another monster for you from the extra deck as well. Um, uh, Quiritus is just crazy. This card is this card is crazy, man. Uh, it, it stops your opponent from attacking over your monsters. Uh, you get insane value when it goes to the graveyard or I mean when it's destroyed by a card effect, I believe. Um, and not only that, but you can bring it, I mean, you can use it as a light to summon out the uh, Despian Proskinian if it hits the graveyard um, as well. So, uh, and then, you know, which brings us to Proskinian. This card is crazy. Um, you can target a, uh, you can target a uh, Link Exceeds a Fusion monster in your opponent's graveyard and either banish it or special summon it to your side of the field. And most of the time when you do that, that technique, uh, which is uh, special summoning it from your opponent's graveyard onto your side of the field, um, yeah, they they pretty much just scoop after that because yeah, this card is just kind of crazy. Um, Link Rebo, uh, we just got him in here uh, for now uh, until we get relinquished an anima. Or I was thinking about running another uh, package as well. I, I haven't really figured it out. Maybe we'll have it um, by time to, by time I put the next video out. And then we have the Predator Plant. Verte Anaconda. All right. So yeah, you guys, that's pretty much gonna round it out for my Despian list. Uh, I'm playing pure Despia, um, so I might. I was thinking about mixing it with uh, Shadows or like getting the Patchwork Engine or something like that. Um, but I'm just playing it pure for now, trying to uh, really just get the hang of it that way first before I start dipping and dabbling in other um, um, engines in it as well. So. Yeah, you guys, if you like the video, man, you know, you guys know what to do, man. Uh, like the video, give it a, um, give it a thumbs up, um, hit the follow button, I mean, hit the subscribe or whatever, you know what I'm saying, share the video. But yeah, it's your boy Jeremy and Sosa, a.k.a. Sith Lord Zeke, man. I hope you guys enjoyed the replay or enjoyed the replay. Um, let me know what you guys think of uh, Despia right now. Is it like a top tier? Could it, could it be a good rogue deck right now? I know it's, it, it's not... Uh, it can't be like top tier right now because we're missing so many of the, uh, the cards, the branded cards. But it's to me, it, it just seems like if you know what you're doing, you know how to pilot really, really well. Then yeah, you could put it, you could do some things with it. Uh, but I'm liking it, I'm enjoying it. Um, yeah. But yeah, you guys, it's your boy Jeremy Sosa, and I see you on the next one. Peace, man.